Hi everyone, I'm Kurt, and I'd like to welcome you to the Vector WA Garage. Um, in this first episode, I'd like to uh, go over my background and uh, give you an idea of how this channel came to be. Um, as a uh, infant growing up in the Detroit metropolitan area, my father was a bit of a car enthusiast. Uh, he had a uh, 1969 Chevelle uh, that uh, he used to cruise Woodward with, uh, drag racing, uh, you know, doing the normal things a, a young man would do uh, in the uh, 60s and 70s in uh, Detroit. And uh, I was a bit of a colicky baby, so uh, the only way he could get me to go to sleep was to put me next to him in the front seat of the Chevelle and uh, go drag racing and uh, cruising up and down Woodward, uh, Livernois, Telegraph Road, etc. Um, from there, uh, at the ripe age of seven, my parents divorced. Um, my mom ended up dating a gentleman who uh, I consider a bit of uh, automotive royalty in the Detroit metropolitan area. I'll not mention his name, but uh, he had a very unique car collection for that time. Um, Detroit was very much a uh, big three uh, town. It, uh, you know, GM, Ford, Chrysler ruled the day. And uh, he had uh, a taste for the exotic. Um, so he had a 1976 Porsche 930 Turbo in Guards Red uh, that uh, at the ripe age of seven, I was uh, privy to cruise Woodward and uh, around the metropolitan area and through some of the back roads of Detroit, uh, getting a taste for uh, the performance levels that that car was capable of. Um, he had a 1977 Ferrari 308 GTS Another beautiful car. Um, he had uh, a Porsche 356 Speedster that was a, a, an absolute stunning car. Every one of his cars were concourse level cars um, and treated as such. He uh, was very uh, uh, good to those cars. They all had low mileage on them. Uh, he uh, enjoyed them sparingly and when he took them out he uh, drove them enthusiastically. Um, Luckily, I was uh, able to go along for many rides in many of those cars. Um, he uh, still maintains a large collection to this day. He's got a uh, Sunroof Coupe 356 Porsche that's a very unique car. I believe one of two produced uh, with a 904 engine in the back of it uh, by Porsche. Uh, very, very you know, unique and, and uh, very rare car. Um, He's got a uh, Porsche 356 race car uh, that was a factory race car at the time. Uh, and uh, then he purchased it you know, years later, now uses it for vintage racing, travels all over the country uh, racing that car. He's got a uh, 1965 427 Corvette uh, Stingray. It's an absolutely gorgeous car. Um, Audi R8, um, one of the original R8s when they came out, uh, has the V8 in it, not the V10, but uh, a very nice car, a uh, good driving car. Uh, he's got uh, several other unique toys that, uh, that uh, adorn his collection, and I have been you know, very lucky to have uh, been able to enjoy a lot of those cars in that collection. Um, maybe in a later episode, I'll convince him to let me put that collection on film, and uh, we can take a look at some of his cars. Um, as a young man, I, uh, was able to enjoy some other things that that gentleman had. He had a, a collection of magazines, uh, Motor Trend, Road and Trek, Car and Driver, uh, all bound editions, which were really interesting to me, uh, as a young man. Uh, he handed me kind of the keys to the kingdom of looking through all those magazines, um, and, uh, came across a very unique article from a, uh, 1972 uh, motor trend. I uh, had a uh, vehicle on the front that I thought was very unique, uh, something that really kind of sparked my interest, uh, a car called the Vector. Um, this kind of led me down a very unique path. Um, when I turned uh, 14, I was encouraged to make a phone call uh, to a gentleman out in California, someone who was originally from Michigan, uh, a gentleman by the name of Jerry Weigert. Um, I gave him a call. Uh, not quite what I expected Jerry Weigert to be when he answered the phone. 
Uh, his secretary had answered and then transferred me over to him. He spent the better part of two hours on the phone with me uh, talking about the project, uh, the Vector W2, and uh, where things were going, and uh, that they were getting ready to make a move. Uh, they were going into a larger facility, uh, leaving the Venice Beach area and going into Wilmington, California. Um, he also, at the end of the conversation, extended a very kind hand to me and asked me to come out and visit, um, which I did uh, that uh, following spring. Um, I had just turned 15 years old, um, was uh, provided a plane ticket uh, for my family, uh, got on a uh, plane and flew across the country solo, all by myself, went out to uh, California and uh, was staying at a hotel off of, I believe it was the D Street exit there uh, near Wilmington, and uh, gave Jerry a call and said, you know, I'm here, uh, wondering what the next steps are. Uh, Jerry said, hey, I'll send somebody over to pick you up and uh, come down to the factory. So I uh, was uh, waiting in the lobby at the hotel, uh, figuring somebody would uh, pick me up in a, in a van or, a, or a, you know, an old uh, four-door sedan. And uh, up pulls a gentleman by the name of Bob Porter uh, driving the W-2. Um, the staff of the hotel about uh, fell over when they saw that car pull into the turnaround uh, in front of the uh, hotel and uh, said, no, you must know some pretty important people. Um, got in the car. Uh, Bob treated me to a very spirited drive back to uh, 400 North Marine, uh, showing off some of the capabilities of the car. Um, it was... Uh, something quite unique. Um, I was used to riding in some cars that were very special at the time. I had, you know, had plenty of uh, uh, time being driven around in a 930 Turbo. I had, had plenty of time being driven around in a, uh, you know, Ferrari, um, several other Porsches, you know, etc. So had a very good feel for what, you know, a performance car or an exotic car was capable of back in the day. Um, the Vector was definitely on a level that was far above what those cars were at the time. Um, from there, I ended up uh, getting introduced to Jerry. Um, Jerry spent the better part of the afternoon with me uh, in his office, just uh, conversing with me, going over uh, you know, what the project entailed, where it was headed, what he was doing, uh, all the things that they were working on. Um, he then uh, took me out and introduced me to a very young uh, David Koska. Uh, David was, at the time, 25 years old, um, had been part of the team for quite some time, and uh, that was the beginning of my career at Vector Aeromotive Corporation. Um, was uh, invited back um, summer after summer to uh, be there. Um, all the way through my college years. Um, after graduating college, uh, permanently went out there uh, to California. So, started off there uh, just as the move had been made from Venice Beach uh, and was there right up until the end of the hostile takeover. Um, I happen to be at this moment in time the only uh, Vector Automotive employee who owns one of the original Vector W8s. Um, what I'm hoping to achieve with this uh, channel is a, a little bit of insight into some unique cars, uh, some cars that I own, um, give you some background, some history, some uh, details on those vehicles, and uh, also uh, to give you some insight and an in-depth look at the Vector W8 and uh, dispel some of the myths, rumors that have been out there for many, many years because the biggest thing I've found on the internet is that the rumor mill has run rampant over the past, uh, you know, 25, 30 years out there. And there are very few truths about the automobile out there on the internet. Uh, so I'm hoping that I can answer some questions from you folks along the way. 
Um, but uh, what I'd like to do first is start off with the car that uh, is behind me. And in our next episode, we'll go over this car. It's uh, my 2007 Nissan 350Z Nismo Edition, one of 1,603 cars built uh, for the world. And one of very few that are left in the condition that this one is in. Um, if you go out and uh, take a look on Auto Trader or any of those uh, type of uh, websites and try to find a 2007 2008 Nismo Edition 350Z, uh, you're going to find that they're very few and far between. Um, and to find one in good condition with low miles is just about impossible. Um, many of these cars have uh, fallen by the wayside uh, uh, due to their uh, hitting the bottom of the market uh, from a value perspective. And it has kind of allowed some uh, younger enthusiasts to get a hold of them and uh, enjoy them. Uh, rather spiritedly and unfortunately a lot of them have met their demise along the way so what this is is a vehicle that I think over time is uh, going to come up in value quite a bit um, and should uh, you know prove to be a, a market winner uh, when all is said and done uh, with only 1603 of them ever built uh, for the world it, it makes it a pretty unique and pretty rare car um, outside of the Nissan community, not too many people are aware of the vehicle, uh, know what it is or what it's about, and I'm hoping to shed a little light on that. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please uh, hit the like button, please share, and uh, also uh, we do have uh, Patreon uh, on our site, so if you, uh, you know, can contribute uh, to help keep these videos coming, uh, I will be uh, very appreciative. Um, thank you once again, and uh, tune in for our next episode.